Hi, I'm Emily Cohen, a researcher at the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute's Migratory Bird Center. And we put together this little video to give you an introduction to our paper titled Quantifying the Strength of Migratory Connectivity that was just accepted in Methods in Ecology and Evolution. And we also have a companion R package called MIG Connectivity, and we'll give you a brief introduction to how to get started with that. This is a really exciting time to study migratory animals like these red knots in the Gulf of Mexico. Just in the past 20 years, rapidly advancing tracking technologies along with genomics, stable isotopes and tissues, and even analyses of long distance ring re-encounter data have made it possible to follow animals throughout the year and address many questions about animal migration for the first time. And one of the important pieces of information we're now able to measure is called migratory connectivity, which is the connections of migratory individuals and populations between seasons. And there are really two components to migratory connectivity. First, where do individuals and populations occur between seasons, so linking the geography? And then second, what is the extent or strength of co-occurrence of populations between seasons? So this paper is about the strength, the fine scale distributions of populations between one season and another. So for example, strong connectivity occurs when populations remain together between seasons, like in the case of this rose-breasted grosbeak. A weak connectivity occurs when populations do not remain together between seasons. So when this green weak teal, breeding populations mix across the winter range. And of course, in the real world, we see all kinds of variation beyond these two extremes. So the qualitative terminology often used to describe migratory connectivity strengths, such as strong, high, moderate, weak, low, diffuse, has made it difficult to make quantitative comparisons across studies. And that's been the objective of this work is to facilitate quantitative comparisons across studies, species, data types, and phases of the annual cycle of the strength of migratory connectivity. So a comparable measure of the strength needs to be independent of species, range size, data type, and account for relative abundance and incorporate sampling error. We address those in this paper. We also define terminology, review the methods currently in use, and then build on these methods to increase applicability. And we put um, our work into a R package called MIG Connectivity. Hi, my name is Jeff Hostetler. I'm a former postdoc with the Smithsonian Migratory Bird Center, and along with Emily, a co-author of this work. The most commonly used metric of migratory connectivity strength is the Mantell Correlation, or RM. To calculate RM, you first need the location of animals, where individuals are located in both the breeding and non-breeding grounds. You then calculate the distances between each pair of individuals in both regions. RM is the correlation between these distances. A correlation of zero means no connectivity, and as it approaches one, the connectivity is stronger. RM has a lot of great properties as a metric of migratory connectivity strength. However, the method doesn't really work when you have transition products between populations instead of location of individuals. In this example, we have discrete breeding and non-breeding populations where the width of the gray line indicates how probable the transition is. RM can also be unreliable when you do have some locations of individuals, but the number of individuals you record per population doesn't match the relative abundances of animals in the wild. In this case, there are more sample individuals from the populations on the left more total individuals from the populations on the right. To get around these limitations, we designed MC based on RM to incorporate transition probabilities between uh, populations in two parts of the annual cycle, as well as relative abundances in these populations. MC is interpreted similarly to RM. In this case, both are about 0 0.5. Another limitation of RM, as commonly applied, is the only measure of uncertainty given is a significance test for whether RM is different than zero or no connectivity. This is great for a step, but it's generally more useful to know a range of values the strength of migratory connectivity could plausibly be, the confidence or credible interval. We provide a methods for incorporating different types of sampling error or uncertainty in the inputs into measures of uncertainty in our MCRM. 
These include things like limited sample size and detection heterogeneity. Some of these sources of sampling error have generally been ignored for RM, but they're important. By incorporating this uncertainty, you're not merely calculating migratory connectivity strength, you're estimating it, and you're being honest about how well you really know it. Hi, my name is Mike Hallworth. I'm a postdoc at the Migratory Bird Center and a co-author on the Migratory Connectivity Paper and Methods. What you just saw was me recapturing an oven bird with a GPS tag, which gives us information about where the bird was breeding and the link between where it went in the winter. Um, some information needed to calculate the strength of migratory connectivity. What I'm going to show you today is what the data you need to calculate migratory connectivity uh, using our R package as well as a brief uh, example of how to do that. There are two main functions within MIG connectivity package to determine the strength of migratory connectivity. First is the calc MC, which calculates the strength of migratory connectivity when there is no sampling error. Picture satellite tracked individuals, for example. If you have sampling error, like location uncertainty associated with light level geolocators, you would use the EST MC function. If you have the time and the data, it's best to use the STMC function. Here are some data inputs that are needed for to use these functions. First, you need to find origin sites and target sites. You then need the distances between each origin site and the distance between each target site. You'll then need the relative abundance found within each origin site. When using the CalcMC function, you need to specify transition probabilities between each origin and target site. We call this Psi in the package. Additionally, providing the sample size is optional when using CalcMC to correct for small sample sizes. When using STMC function, you need to specify origin points, which is typically the capture location of individuals, and target points the location where they ended up in the subsequent season. Finally, you need to specify location bias and location uncertainty associated with the location data. See the package vignette for an example of how to calculate those values from light level geolocators. To use the package, first download the package from GitHub and load the package. Load the ovenbird data associated with the package, and here's what the data look like. We have predetermined target sites. Here they're Florida, Cuba, and the island of Hispaniola. In this example, we're going to include location uncertainty of these data derived from light level geolocators. We run the STMC function, and then we take a look at the output. If you have the data, it's quite simple to estimate migratory connectivity with this package. The R package is available on GitHub and at the link shown at the top of the screen. Now, using this package, you can compare migratory connectivity estimates between and across species.